Hey everyone, welcome back into the afternoon of ClayshareCon Day 5. Oh, we only have a couple more tutorials, but I'm really excited that one of them is the next one. We have Jeff from GR Pottery Forms. He's going to be joining us and he's going to be talking about using pottery tools and answering any of the questions you have about using GR Pottery Forms or pottery making in general. So let's throw it on over to Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Hello, hello. How are you, everybody? It's Sunday. We made it. So, we made it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, again, so glad to be here and uh, such a great opportunity. I think you guys have done an unbelievable job this week. And uh, I know uh, it seems like there's been a lot of positive feedback. So I know you guys out there, if you're watching this and if you watched more than a couple of times, make sure you uh, sign up and uh, pay for that ClayShare membership. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jess and Kevin really earn that earn the money that you give them. So it's uh, it's uh, this is a way to give back to them. If you are enjoying this conference, for sure sign up, sign up. It's uh, you know this this weekend is worth what it costs for the whole year. So uh, yeah, so thank you guys for all your work and all yeah, your uh, thank you and thank you, you know, for that recommendation. Yeah, you're putting in your. We know I I can totally see uh, uh, how much heart in. Uh, and how giving you guys have done for this. So uh, if you guys, that's uh, it's great. And uh, out there, I'm glad you guys get to enjoy it and uh, share this information. So uh, this information that we love to just uh, to be in the studio and share. So that's a little bit what I would like to do today is kind of just share some information about tools and then specifically the tools and recommended tools I would use for uh, making GR Pottery Forms objects and uh, different things. So yeah. So let's just get started. Um, and if you think of any, uh, have any questions about recommendations of what I may, may um, if you want to know what I would recommend, feel free to ask those in the question. And uh, Jess will um, ask those to me, any of those that uh, seem appropriate. So um, for, this, for this time, but um, uh, first I'll just start out with the kind of the basic, the basic ones. And if you order a tool pack, these are the four tools you will get. Um, they are, maybe, maybe is uh, a modeling tool, which is great for kind of cleaning the edges, especially if you're using the wah. Uh, this little rounding, rounding rib tool. And I'm going to go into each one of these specifically. A foot maker. And you know, you guys know you can, all these tools you can, I'm going to even talk to you today again too about how you can make them yourselves. And also there, I know Jess has a, a class on making your own foot maker. And then the final one is the sew tool. And so um, let's just start with those. So um, let's, the first one is, uh, if you want to type that in, um, actually, just even just type, yeah, what you're doing is great. Um, Shelby is here and she's going to type in some of the, the specific tools for you to help look them up if you need to. Um, but the first one is the, the JA20 um, Kemper tool. And um, it's just a, it's a, just, it's much like those kind of cleanup tools that have a nice rubber silicone tip edge. Um, it's really great for kind of cleaning things out. It's also really good for, um, for this end part here is really good for, like if you have to reek down into a pot and kind of clean up a coil, it's got this nice kind of finger almost length of a finger attachment here kind of a thing. So yeah, so this is a great tool. It's um, like a little over three bucks. You can get the, some of these, you can get these at, some of the distributors have them in their stores. A lot of times they just have Kemper wood modeling tools in their store, but um, um, this specific one is nice with it. They're, they have all different, um, uh, they're different for different uh, jobs or different uh, aspects or processes and making pottery. So this one is really great for that kind of cleanup shaping tool. Um, the actually let's let's go next to the the mud tool there the edge rounding rib it's mud tools. And so you can see um, I want to show you one at the um I thought we're gonna say funny. <laughs> uh, the one that I this is the tool and so you can make this yourself. You can even make you if you make this yourself, you have to make one for your buddy because uh, basically <laughs> you, you take a uh, number five 
uh, mud tools rib. The yellow one I think works the best and you can cut it in half. I used to uh, use a, a bandsaw, which works really well, but we found that if you have a really nice sharp scissors, you can cut them in half as well. But um, what I also want to talk about too is like, I, uh, there's some suppliers out there that are so busy just trying to keep up that sometimes they might cut corners. And uh, I don't think they're doing that intentionally and, or malicely. So um, I want to say that if you get a tool that has this real sharp edge right here, I don't know if you can see that over in the camera there and put it on here. So if you can see that, um, just point it here, if it has a really sharp edge right here. That just means whoever sold it to you cut it in half and uh, didn't do what they needed to do. Because what it really should look like is this one here where it has that little edge rounded. And so if you want to make these yourself, you can just take a Dremel with a little sander on there. And what you want to do is just sand these edges here so that you can round them off. Because what will happen is if you leave them stiff like this, it'll make a mark when you, um, you can kind of barely see that. See how, so if I'm going to try to clean this edge, you're going to kind of keep hitting this edge, this corner against the pot. So if you have that rounded, it doesn't leave, it doesn't leave that mark and just kind of cleans that edge. So that's, that's, that's uh, the advantage of that tool. So make sure that if you have ordered uh, these tools and they, the distributors tell you their GR Power Reforms rounding ribs, make sure that they have this rounded edge. Um, yeah. And, and so I'm really using, I really want to cut these in half and use the, this particular version because it, um, it, it doesn't wear out. Uh, let's see if I have, uh, let's see if I can find my old, uh, let's try trying to think about what other tools in here from the past. There is a really good uh, Bill Van Gilder uh, promotes it. Oh, here's one of those. <laughs> Sorry, I should. I looked in here like three times. Is, is there anything I need? And of course, I always kind of change my my tune and find something to talk about that I wasn't planning on talking about. Anyway, I can't find it, but um, there here is one of those uh, uh, rubber tip tools. Sometimes they have this little edge here. But they make there's all different companies. You can see how flexible this one is. And this side is a little stiffer, so they have different flexes. So this this tool could replace the um, this wood tool, but I really I really am a big huge fan of the wood one. But uh, yeah. So um, oh yeah, so I was going to show you this. Uh, uh, Bill Van Gilder has this uh, edge rounding tool. It's actually it's actually made for the for um, woodworkers. And on one side, it's got this kind of loop. Can't even really draw you a picture. <laughs> Shoot, I think, uh, yeah, I don't have it here. I, uh, yeah, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's always it. how so, it is. The one you want to find, you can't find. Yeah, and it's hard to explain. It's got this nice, it works really good for edge rounding, but the problem is that it wears out so fast. So I really wanted to show you how, how fast it wears out. So I switched over to this mud tools material and it is really unbelievable on how, how it maintains its edge and uh, you can use it over and over and over and over again. So mud tools makes unbelievable quality products. Anything that they sell, it's unbelievable. So I think I have almost one of every rib they have. Like all of them. They make the three tools, right? And uh, Michael Sherrill's. Amazing, amazing <laughs> artist, craftsman. So it sure uh, is. Someday, maybe I can, uh, when I grow up, be like him. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think you're doing pretty good on your own. <laughs> I think you're good I being you. <laughs> All right. So next, the foot tool, and uh, the foot tool is really comes from. I in the very beginning, I was, was making these large platters, and I wanted to cut strips of clay, right? And so 
it worked fine if I was making a couple platters and just measure them out and cut strips. And I, I realized that I wanted to have this nice angle on the edge so it would match the side of the form better. And so um, uh, somehow I had kept looking for ways to do that and couldn't find a tool out there. And then somehow I figured out that if I cut up, cut my loop tool, I had this, had this nice big large Kemper um, carving tool and had this nice big loop or like if you were doing big sculptures and then you had to cut it apart and then hollow it out. Um, but I wasn't doing very many big sculptures so this tool felt neglected. So I thought, oh, well, I can give you a new purpose. And uh, so I cut the loop off and what happened was I ended up with these, um, these, these pronged edges here. And um, you can see how worn down it is. This side is a little thinner than the other one. So it's, um, so it's, uh, yeah, so it, this is how I started. But basically, and so then I would let everybody in my classes use this tool and I started to get a little possessive about my tool. And I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna, I better skip this class. <laughs> So I, I don't feel guilty and not letting them use my tool to make a foot. So, uh, and I felt like they all had to have a foot. So, you know, it was the main dilemma. And then one of the, one of the, one of the students, Cheryl in the class, Cheryl says, uh, why don't you use a foot? Why don't you use a corn skewer? And, uh, and so, so sure enough, uh, the corn skewer is a great tool. And so I tried to find different ones that were able, able to bend and not break the core of the tool and also was able to kind of cut the, cut the metal so I could kind of easily and quickly kind of smooth out and round off the edges of the tool. So, and I could create the bevel that I wanted. I know um, some artists even have multiple ones because you can have, you could bend one that's a little bit wider or a little bit narrower. So you can, they're, they're pretty stiff, but you can, with a little bit of force, kind of bend them into the, the size that you want. So I typically like to have almost that 45 degree angle, kind of like the edges of the form. So then everything kind of matches up and lines up. So um, yeah. So that's uh, um, that is a foot maker and it's a fantastic tool for, um, for, uh, for making things. One little thing, other thing I did do was uh, I left, uh, this is a fun little trick. And I, I don't have anything close here to show you, but I left one of the one of the sides straight, and then angled the other one. So when I cut, I had a, a straight side and an angled side, which worked really well to make a a well on the inside of my pots if you wanted to make a lid that sat inside a hand built object. So all kinds of ways to kind of alter it to kind of uh, use them for you. So I am a big fan of. Um, you know, I don't have access to, uh, you know, all of the different companies that make tools and trying to keep them at a, at a price that's, uh, you know, economical for everybody, me included. So uh, using something out there that, that we can repurpose it for clay use is like ideal. So definitely try to, don't, don't be afraid to kind of use tools that you're not using to try to turn them into a tool for other purpose. So yeah, so that is the uh, foot maker. Next uh, is the sew tool. And so uh, the sew tool is, I, I talked a lot about this before, but the sew tool is basically a way to kind of measure, an, an alternative way to measure this edge. And uh, I actually, let me quick grab a plate right outside here. I have another good thing you can use it for again too. It's already have a new use. In the suit tool. I used to do this when I was teaching classes. There'd be like, where did Jeff go? <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens though. You'll be in the middle of yeah. something and then you know, somebody will say something like, but I have that. I just go, go to go, I gotta go grab it. Cause you don't have everything right there. And you step off. And of course people probably show up while you're off camera and they're like, well, who, what's happening here? There's nobody yeah, there. Where'd he go? But yeah. Where'd they go? Here? I'm here. I'm here. I won't leave you. I promise. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> uh, 
Um, this was a great tool here. Maybe we can do the overhead camera here. But um, basically what I did was I, uh, I wanted to kind of make this, this line around the edge. And so this is what this really this tool does is it uh, is a way to kind of measure things for you. So I'm going to lock it in place here. I think uh, just extend it just a little bit. But now what I was able to do is run this along the edge here and help me develop that line so it makes it look nice and perfect. So for me to actually hand draw that might might uh, take some more talent than I have, I think, right? So uh, so this so then I can re-situate it here for the other line. And I could make note the this compass, the suit tool that we endorse has a um, measuring tool on it. So now I can run that along the edge here and make another line. So if you have these nice fancy templates and you want to make lines um, to decorate your piece, uh, you can use the suit tool. So another fun use for the suit tool. Um, so lots of lots of options. But really, this is really to, to back up again. I kind of got sidetracked on you know the new new thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to the old, uh, the, the main thing, right, is that, uh, you know, really we can run along this edge to help us to um, to measure a consistent, and this is a bad example, but it's got a template, I have one here, yeah, where you can kind of see, and it has shrunk, so it's not going to be the same as when I started, but I know, like, I like inch and three quarters, so, uh, so I can put my little stool tool here, an inch and three quarters when I was making the piece. And now I can run along that edge. And that way, all of my plates will, um, the edges will line up and be the same. So maybe I want a shorter one for another type of series, different type of aesthetic on there. I could change that. So it's just a way of measuring that outside lip. And so if you don't need a lip, um, if you don't have a lip on there, it's, uh, you may not need it, but uh, definitely a great way to measure. And also, uh, for me, I feel like it's uh, it's just a, a fast way to measure things. I know, like I've seen a great, I've seen just do a great time, great video where you just measure with a ruler, take a little line, and then do it. But you know, this is make the real, especially if you're a tool tool fanatic. This is a great way to kind of put that into a tool. So. I have, yeah. so I used to make, I just want to, I, I used yeah, to make yeah, all my yeah. own templates um, and I still make a lot of my own templates, but people are like, oh, how'd you do that? And I'm just like, I drew it. A lot of my templates I hand draw, but I do a lot of drawing. So it's totally different. So for me, it's like, oh, it's easy. I just drew it. But in fact, that's yeah. a lot. So use the Sue tool or a template or something out there because you'll make yourself crazy if you don't. <laughs> yeah. And you know, you kind, of, you kind of fit into what works for you, right? If you're super technical and are able to be able to do use CAD and draw this 3D design. You can cut it out on a, a die cutter, right? And you can have all kinds of things. But for me, that's a way too technical. And so uh, I got to find these things that, uh, like you're saying, that you can just kind of draw or eyeball or, or kind of a tool that I already have or can use. So, but um, but again, too, um, here's another one I we've kind of discovered that. Uh, is there some shortcuts out there from some of the distributors? Make sure that if they are telling you it's a GR Pottery Forms um, suit tool, they may even call it a suit tool on your invoice, and it shows up like this, like without a dowel, or it's even just a regular math compass. Um, they've kind of, uh, and I, again, I don't think it's malice or that they're try intentionally, they just don't know. They're so busy trying to get you what you want and what you need that they may have to try to take some shortcuts. But basically what we do is we take a dowel, and this is something you can do too. Um, uh, the, why I highly recommend is finding a compass that has a locking mechanism on it. Because when you're going along this edge, you don't want it to move or flex because then it just causes problems. So um, having one of those architectural compasses that have a little dial in the middle is a really nice one. And then you can actually put a bead on the end uh, glue a bead on one of the ends that works great so because what we're trying to do is have something that's going to glide along the surface without making a mark 
And so what we did was take a dowel and uh, we just took this regular kind of and sanded that edge round so it would glide along the clay really nicely and not leave a mark. And then we kind of softened up the other side. But um, so the GR Pottery Form Sue Tool should come with a dowel. So if they, if you received one from somebody or even from us and it doesn't have a dowel in it, make sure you let us know. And uh, actually you don't even have to call the distributor. Just call us, we'll send you a dowel. So uh, people no want to know who is Sue. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Sue. Sue is my favorite. I'm glad you asked. Sue is uh, one of my original members at my studio. And uh, Sue is a sweet, sweetest lady. And she has uh, helped keep my, uh, my studio clean. Uh, she is like super particular and clean in a, in a great way. Like a, she's not like, a, you know, not like annoying clean way. It's just super helpful, super, 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 I can't say it, serving. So she's such a server um, attitude and personality. So, and she likes it clean. So she might as well make it clean for everybody. So Sue and her sister, they were both uh, original members. Her other sister, sister is Cheryl. So she, I had the two sisters. And then, sorry, this is a little side side note, side Jeff joke. Sorry, so bear with me a minute. Okay. <laughs> laugh, just laugh. So, um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so we had the two sisters, and then we ended up having these two guys that had to like in the, in the studio. One of them had to like become ordained on the internet to marry a, some friends of his, and one guy was in seminary, and another guy was a pastor. So we had um, three pastors three um three pastors and two sisters so i used to say that uh we had the cleanest studio around with uh, two sisters and three pastors so anyway <laughs> 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 uh, so some uh, folks are asking do you sell the dowels separately no we'll send you one for free they'll send you it for oh. free reach out reach out yeah yeah I'll get so you this one Give to you if you want to make your own and, a present. Uh, yeah, we can send them. <laughs> free dowels. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's right that's, for Clay Share Con only. That is a deal. Yeah, true, true. That's right. Only, only in uh, in February of twenty twenty one. So uh, that's right. When you're watching this on the replay, yeah, <laughs> years yeah. from now. Okay, maybe maybe a couple of days, a couple of days from now. <laughs> But yeah, so that is the Sue tool. So Sue, um, she had one of those architectural compasses in, in her toolbox and it would help her to make, old, especially with oval platters, she was using it to uh, kind of make that edge. And I was like, oh, that's that's perfect, Sue. Let's, uh, we need to make something that everybody can have one of those. And so I like affectionately called it the Sue tool just in the, uh, yeah. give her the credit. So Sue um, is out there, Sue Heck. Sue Havman, if you want to look her up and give her all the credit. Say, thank her. <laughs> thank you for the tool, probably not, Sue. Probably won't uh, <laughs> like all the publicity, but uh, yeah. So she, she her, <laughs> her husband, uh, her husband Will. So Sue and Will came to like every Enseca with me since the, the since the since the beginning. I think actually the first one I not, but um, the everyone that I've done, they all they've come and helped me. So. They're big. They have been a big part of the success of this, and even the one year they drove out to Portland from Michigan with a trailer full of forms. So, uh, so I owe them a lot. So, yeah. So yeah. people have a few things they'd like you to make for them. Uh, one is a deviled egg tray. They know that I have a class, and I do. I have a class on making a deviled egg tray, but they want you to make a deviled egg form. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great. I have. I, I'm going to. Maybe in the next week or two, so keep watching because Easter is coming, right? Um, I know. I may, have, I may have a new Jeff version. And, uh oh, uh, my class will be yeah. obsolete. Just get Jeff's form. That's it. That's all you need. No. Um, and then the oh, other question gonna... is: Are you are you going to do any square, square, straight sided forms? Uh, one of our uh, viewers was looking for a square sided plate. Form because her children are foodies and they want that kind of plate. So it's a square, straight sided piece. Yeah. Um, you, you mean a template or uh, 
I believe square. a form, a GR form. So instead of an angle, more of a straight is what I'm thinking. I'm trying to go back and find the comment. We've had so many it's lost. No problem. But we do have the square to have straight edges, uh, but they yeah. have a 45 degree angle. Yeah. Right. I think that was the question was not the angle straight up and down oh, the side. Bevel. No bevel. Rock that up. I love it. <laughs> uh oh. Favorite soapbox. They even have one here to show. You have one here. Look at that. It's like you knew. It. Well, it's not. It's not a um, square. Or it's not, uh, but it leads into this conversation about uh, how people want to have this more vertical and not a not beveled edge, and that beveled edge is super important um, for this all to work. Uh, you can definitely go out there and find all kinds of things like um, you know just. Just like those uh, plaques from, or, and I've used them in the well, past, too, those plaques from, from my Only because I didn't know about your forms at the time. <laughs> yeah, no, no, right. Only until right. I found you, but they work. They work. If you if you live somewhere, you can't get just forms because sadly you can't get them everywhere, although you should be able to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But there's this great company, and I, I'm um, actually, hopefully they're watching. Hopefully, hopefully um, I'm hoping to partner with them, actually. They're, they're in the UK. And they are do they do a great job with um, I'm not gonna say their name you gotta search them out but uh, they do a great job and they kind of what happened was is uh, the supplier there wasn't quite fast enough for the demand and it took so long to go ship things there so uh, a wood shop there started making making the drape forms and um, they were just they they mainly just make what people want them to make so. So if you want them to, if you want straight edges, you got to go talk to them because they'll make you whatever, just a little more stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> and I will, because I want you to be successful. I want the, um, the product that I, that I feel comfortable selling to you that I know is going to work. Um, the problem with this straight edge, um, this vertical edge is if we drape the clay over top, um, we that it's going to shrink inward and it's going to crack or you're going to have to remove it too quickly and it's going to warp so those are the reasons why i don't have those straight edge so there's some great uh, social media out there with the forms that are straight edge look for look for a lot of pieces except for like super good professionals um, that have made it work look for a lot of pieces out there that have that straight edge because for the most part it's not really going to work for them. It's going to along the process. They might be able to make them nicely, but along the process, it's going to warp or crack and not be able to have a finished product. So that's kind of my um, little uh, opinion about that. So you definitely can press these type of forms into. I know like Sharon has some nice ones that are kind of have a smoother edge that you can press down into, like make those nice like flower shaped pieces. Um, those, those are a great for that technique where you're going to remove it almost immediately. But if you're going to make dinnerware or platters, it's uh, it's uh, really difficult to get that final result. So, so yeah, so that unfortunately that is the disadvantage of a hump mold um, in that it's going to shrink inward. So uh, yeah, sorry, it's a long kind of conversation about that, but I think it's a good thing to talk about. And I know there's a lot of um, information out there. You know, to really be honest, if you really want to make make um, a, a, a plate, because there's some great cooking, great cooking uh, magazines that have these nice straight edge. And I think basically they were they're plates that were cast. But um, all you need to do is take a, take a form. And uh, actually what I've done is you can, you can put a slab and make a slab edge just by kind of like I would do to make the foot. You put that slab around the outside edge, and then you can put the form in there to cut it to a certain size. So there's super, there's really good ways, easy ways to make a plate to those vertical edges um, without using a form. More of it has to do with using a potter's wheel. So, so it's more of a, yeah. But uh, people are wondering if there's a difference between the colors of the circles. Oh, good. Great question. Um, 
the, these are these are sold to elementary schools, and so I have all four colors here. They are there. No, there, there's no difference. It's just that uh, they're they're mainly produced for for schools for math classrooms, and so they just have a variety of different primary colors. And we can't just order. I was really hoping that the band would just order one color, and then that be it. So now we have a choice. So we send them randomly to you if you um, have a certain color you like of these four colors. It is listed on the. <laughs> if you want, pick your color. <laughs> pick your color. It is listed on your, on the website that you can pick your color, and you just have to write that in the notes. We have this kind of notes section. You can and, write, uh, come with the blue suit tool. And you know what our our most popular note is? I think uh, the, the most frequent note is that that I am a clay share me member and I love Jeff. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, so a few people are asking if you demo how to use the Sue tool. Um, and some folks are asking if you would demo using the yellow tool, your mud tool you cut in half and how you use that. I think you did a little bit. Yeah, I can I can do the mud tool, the, the suit tool. There's some lots of other videos, and you'll have to come back next year for the uh, more. I have to uh, wait till the whole year. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's lots of videos out there on the suit tool. So um, even this week, from we used it. Um, yeah, we did think, use it. Yeah, on uh, day three, I believe. So check out the day three video, and you can see how the suit tool works. Um, but this is that one, this one I hand built kind of quickly the other day with a template underneath there. And uh, so what um, typically what I would do is, is use, uh, I like the clay to be leather hard and I like to use this raft first. And that would be to help me kind of clean this edge without digging. And especially if it's leather hard, it glides along there. Um, which is a good segue into this next tool. This is just a nice aluminum tool. It's made by um, Pottery Supply House in, in uh, Canada, PSH, you just say. Um, you can check that out, Pottery Supply House. And they make this tool. It, and so when the clay is bone dry, then I can kind of clean that edge. And this is a nice sound, right? Mm, that's great. <laughs> My so favorite. I use that tool. <laughs> <laughs> Except uh, this this part when it's really bone dry, it will wear out your tools super super fast, right? So you need such super sharp tools that you can either sharpen or buy new ones. And this clay has grog in it, so I can't really use a sponge very easily. So I might use this my this wet this edge, and I can already feel it's real gritty. So now what this tool is really good to do is to kind of go over that edge and kind of burnish slash smooth out that edge. And I'm trying to get into this inside part here so it uh, will clean that up really nicely. These edges, all these edges here too are really good. Like say you're making a uh, a square or a piece that has a, a, um, a little corner. It's a really good cleanup tool use this as that as well. So yeah. So that's all the round tool. Super easy. It's really great um, to kind of clean and round up this edge, kind of smooth and soften it up. So so what the I was talking about these rasps. There's some really good one again. Mud tools make some nice ones. They're called shredders. And all it is this rasp R A S P that um, that drywallers use and they can they can they can um, get dull really quickly and real easily. So, but if um, I don't have any square pieces here, uh, I'm going to give you this example here. So, say I was making this piece here. This is really, really good way to help kind of help me level out those edges. If I cut afterwards, I can use these lines that are created by the form here. And I see that that's like an eighth of an inch from that end of that line. This one about eight. So I did pretty good on cleaning and trimming this one. So, so I can kind of just visually see if those, how those edges work. And if not, I can just kind of scrape some of the clay away on the top and on the bottom. 
and it makes it a really quick, easy way to uh, create this nice form without it warping, you know, um, and torquing. So cleaning it while it's leather hard. Yeah. So. I don't know if you can see this one. I can see you can see in the in the top down here. Where is it at here? Sorry, you got a little glare. There we go. Yeah, there we go, maybe. <laughs> Um, you can see, see I have a little bit of a drawing here. I made this kind of this view from somebody's cabin, and I kind of drew out the drawing on the an eight on a six and a half by six inch paper, and then I could just take a pen and go over each of those lines every time, so I could make a set of sixteen plates um, for this person. We have a question. Will the forms ever be available with a rounded edge so the imprint is not so defined? Uh, so no. the sides and the bottom meet. <laughs> well, maybe. maybe. I should no. I should never say no, but uh, no, you shouldn't. Um, there, <laughs> it's super easy. You never know. Uh, yeah. There's, I like to say no. I'm trying to learn to say no, but it's uh, I shouldn't say no, right? <laughs> but it's um <laughs> I have a lot of people that uh, that a lot of artists um, that what they do when they get their forms is they sand down that edge, and so you can just take some sandpaper and just sand that edge as much as you want, and um, that that helps to eliminate that line. The problem is is that this takes extra time and labor, and also a variety of different options for people. So again, it's just too hard to kind of to uh, to find that and kind of work that into uh, to the, just the normal stock of work um, that we sell. So, because we're selling so many of the forms that uh, it, uh, it's just too hard to have so many different varieties. Um, there could be uh, there could be one that has the nice gradual edge coming real soon, but uh, we'll see. Uh, yeah. A teaser. So, <laughs> secret. Don't tell anybody. But um, you know how I mean, I like to kind of. Let it, let we won't out. tell anybody. All the people okay. watching, nobody's going to tell. No, say anything. Uh, well, there could nobody's be. really paying attention. No, um, but uh, yeah, and so, um, but yeah, that's a great question. I think. Also, I think it's really good, and if you have a CNC machine or access to somebody that has a CNC machine, CNC machine, or even a, a a laser cutter, they can they can start to cut. They can cut these little designs into your form for you, so every time it would have that. Uh, I don't shoot. I don't have. Any, I don't know if I have any here. Um, but I have like this hand carved because even a lot of wood block cutters that make these nice wood block cuts use the same material for wood blocks. So you can carve a nice pattern mm -hmm. in your in your form if you wanted to do that over and over again. So. There's so many different options and ways. And again, definitely don't uh, buy some second from us. Sometimes we have a second sale and uh, give it a try, give it a trial or buy a little form that you can try it on. And uh, so it's a great thing. I really would love, um, here's another future opportunity, right? I'm gonna give you, just give it to you here. This is, so is uh, what I'd also love to be able to do is take one of these, bats and have somebody laser cut a design in the lip and then if you could have a different one for each size each, this each size form and so you could when you put that over top you would you would imprint that texture into the lip every time so there's so many ways so many opportunities to uh make them your own make the designs you want and uh and uh, yeah so any other any other uh, questions? Just One, reading through. Couple, go ahead. What's that? No, go ahead. It's good. Oh yeah. And so um, I also a big fan of the the Dirty Girls slingshot as we talked about already. It's uh it's such a nice tool because you can hold it in your hand really nicely. It's got a really ergonomic, and it's made by a potter for potters, so it, it's really well thought out. Has this nice angle on the rib or on the wires, and so it um, it's a great way to cut along the templates. And so 
the slingshot tool. Fantastic. And uh, I know they work super hard to bring these pottery tools over there at Dirty Girls and Special Metal Works. So um, definitely is a great, you're supporting a good cause by uh, mm -hmm. buying buying that uh, too. And here's another one too, um, Dolan Tools. She makes, she and her husband pretty much, and her mom, make these tools themselves. And so uh, they are Dolan Tools, D-O-L-A-N. Perfect. And you can just take that. Yeah. They they um they make uh they make wonderful trimming tools and knives. And Sue, her dad is the one. He passed away a few years ago, and she's kind of taken over the business. And uh, super nice person. But again, just trying to make uh, tools for you. And this one is great because it's uh this this is the number twenty or sorry two twenty two twenty C. It's like their most the two twenty S is better but we'll let you use the 220c oh, if you prefer okay <laughs> every so that's the thing the 220s and the 220c same blade different handle that's all the okay. c is oh. more as curved with for the grip like it's got it's more rounded oh. curved ergonomic handle the s is straight sided um ah, like an old wooden draftsman pencil which i like the i like okay. the s like, i have both but Okay. Uh, yeah, but a lot of people like the C because it does fit the hand nicely, I will say. Yeah, yeah I do one. have I, mine written on here C, so I think I have the C version. Yeah, so this, he looks like this, you do. This is a great one for um, like making teapots or things that are um, really delicate and you need nice sharp cut. It's, uh, it's a great tool for that. So, yeah, and you obviously know all about the forms. There's lots of, there's not too much to talk about with the forms except for. Again, I was talking about that edge, but um, yeah, the, the wheel attachment, we have these tools and we talked about that a little bit more this week in an earlier video, so I won't talk too much about it. I will talk Wait. about some more. The, oh, go ahead. You have a question? We had a few questions before we get too far along. Sure. So Definitely. someone said, will you um, talk about storing your forms for caring for them the best way? And if you get any swollen spots in them, what to do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know, um, it's uh, the, the, they're wood. They're uh, they're made out of wood. And I talk about like even this table that I'm working on here is 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 a uh, MDF, and it uh, you can see sometimes it gets watermarks, and so like if it gets uh, some watermarks or even it shows like uh, like texture marks on there from where you uh, put a texture on the clay and it left marks. A lot of times, what works really well is if you just take a wet sponge and just kind of wet the surface of the whole thing. It basically rehydrates that whole surface and then will make it all even and um, uh, look and uh, kind of uh, look better. So no matter what that surface is gonna be, uh, be um, you know, maybe look this color or maybe not quite so pretty. So if you need to have pretty, you might have to buy a new one, but um, but it's, uh, it's definitely, they're really super dur durable. And, you know, they're wood too. And they make these from like making particles of wood. And sometimes I hear some customers, especially the beginning time, I would suggest maybe make them a couple times, um, like by adding a, a, just a, a plain slab of clay, leave it down there for half an hour or so, remove it. Um, let it dry completely, do it again, and that will kind of prepare that surface. You don't really need to do that. Like, I don't really talk about people to do that normally, but it's a, it's a good way because sometimes what can happen is just because of the shock of the moisture with the wood, sometimes you get these, these cracks in the edges. And uh, it's been unbelievable. Like, over the years, I've probably had less than a half a dozen, like probably four, people that actually returned their product because um, they just felt like it, it was, it was just, this, this, uh, this something that was uh, not going to work for them or it was, um, I can't think of the word. What is the word? Uh, <laughs> that it's not, it was enough. not compatible with their way of making. Yeah, that too. But then <laughs> but the, the, the uh, material flaw. Oh, defective. They thought it was a defective, defective one. Defective, that's okay. The word. 
<laughs> That's the word. Defective. Defective. That's a product was actually defective. <laughs> and because a lot of times what I do is encourage them is like, okay, give it one more try. And it might have this big crack on the side. And usually it's just like one of the forms out of all the forms that they have. And basically what you want to do is try it again. And I almost guarantee that it's that when you take it off, it will not show where that crack was. And so, so I never hear back from people again after that usually. So, but definitely, <laughs> definitely happy to replace the product. Um, but basically it's just amazing that it kind of, once it gets wet again, it kind of reheals itself. It re kind of stabilizes itself. And then when it dry, it may kind of expand and kind of crack a little bit. And that's just, um, you know, maybe 10, 20% of the time. Um, so if you have that and um, yeah, it's, un it's unfortunately, it's the, the reason the, the forms are under $20, under $10 is because, you know, we're kind of able to cheat with this, with this wood product. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, if we use plaster, it's a whole different thing, but we'd have to pay a lot more for plaster for that, for this, do the same job. So uh, I definitely, you know, believe that it's really super durable and it, uh, or I wouldn't, uh, I just stand behind it. But so for sure, if there's a product that you're unhappy with, send it back to us and we'll refund you for sure. So, um, I definitely, I definitely want to, I definitely will stand behind it and, uh, definitely will, uh, say, but I know that it's, uh, you know, that we are, it is wood, it is clay, it is, uh, water and, uh, they're not always best friends. So, uh, you know, so let's, uh, so yeah, so, but storing them, oh, here's one thing to warn you about too, like if um, you want to pump out 30 little tea trays um, and using the same form, you could also run into some problems with durability because basically every time you press down into that wet clay, it's absorbing some of the moisture. So if you did 30 in a row, by the 30th one, you're adding moisture and pressure. It's going to start to um, kind of, the product is going to start to uh, kind of um, disintegrate or start to break apart. So all you got to do is let it um, dry in between. Give it some time, like maybe make 10, maybe make 20. You can kind of adjust to see how wet it's getting. But the, this, the key is to like keep it as dry as you can, as often as you can. And it'll last a lot longer. I have used the forms for eight years doing production work, same ones over and over um, that, uh, and I would typically use them one, one time per day. So it's about a 24 hour cycle that you would use these forms that I would, for what I would recommend. And uh, then I let them dry out overnight and then use them again the next day. So you can use them over and over and over and over. So it's, a, it's unbelievable. It's, a, it's been a, a, it's been great. It's also, good that it's made from from trees soft trees that are um that are easily sustainable it's young trees that they're using for these and so that they just keep replanting what they they take away so i also believe that it's not really uh cutting down old old ran old forests or old rainforests to uh, make this product it's something that's uh that they can harvest almost yearly so it's uh very sustainable. Um, yeah. So a few few questions with the measurements for your forms, is that the inside or, or the outside? This like when you measure the forms, which side? Yeah, you just have to think that uh, we always go for the biggest size, right? Uh, so we, I always want to kind of uh, advertise the biggest best, right? And so it's always the biggest size is what the measurements are. Um, a good trick is if you want to know what this inside size is, it's usually uh, an inch and a half smaller than the, the size listed. So if it was a um, 13 or eight by 13 rectangle, the inside is going to be six and a half by 11 and a half. So it just goes down an inch and a half. And that's why we have a six and a half by 11 and a half inch rectangle. So then it'll stack with each other. So that, and that's why the circles are all inch and a half apart. So then they can still stack with each other. And uh, it just kind of kind of helps us define what sizes to have available. Because really, you know, you could have every single quarter inch, inch size, but uh, 
it would be impossible to have everything in inventory all the time. So, yeah. And we've had a lot of questions from all, all the places. Everybody's asking a similar question. Can you, or should you treat them with anything? Can you put wax on the forms? Could you do a sealant on the form, some kind of barrier on the form? I, I, my, my belief is no. Um, it's, uh, it, it's basically, I feel the benefit of the material is that it's absorbing enough surface moisture to kind of push against the clay. And so then it will release super well. And even if you leave it on there overnight and leave it bone dry, it's going to release. If you have that sealant on there, it, it's a good chance that when it dries, it's going to catch or stick. And so you may have problems with warping or cracking. So yes, you may, you may increase the durability of them, but you're taking away some of the, the, the positive advantages of, of the forms by putting that seal on or wax on there. So they do make, they do make wood products that have, um, have more moisture repelling materials in there. So it, I, um, you, you could, uh, I would use though, I would, I would be using that if, um, that were better, but it's really best to use this, um, this porous wood product that's just porous enough to be durable enough, but, um, porous enough to really get that release really well. So that's really what I'm going for is that release, especially if you're going to carve into it or do any kind of detail as that, as that clay shrinks, it's going to release from it as opposed to stick to it and clump to it. So, um, so yeah, so there's lots of, lots of advantages of just, of not sealing it. Yeah. So. So along the same vein, could you just cover them with cling film and use it to, um, you know, then release and I guess it would come off with the clean yeah. film right away. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's a, it's a hack, right? It's a possible totally. thing. But you can, if you want to do that, you can just go to the store and buy plastic um, bowls or anything <laughs> that, that you could drape over and get all these yeah. different, you get all these different angles too. So it's, uh, you know, so it's, yeah. So it's just kind of what you want to do, what works best for you. Um, but uh, yeah, so there's, it, that's the fun, right? Is there's so many options and so many, um, things. I'm just trying to define those things that make you the most successful um, for sure, that have proven to be successful. So yeah, so yeah, that's what, yeah. So that's my goal. That's our, our thing is, is we're really not trying to create, uh, we're not trying to create uh, so many different products. We're just trying to create the products that make you the most successful and, uh, and accessories and things go along with that. So so someone was asking, and it's a good suggestion. Have you ever thought about um, printing the measurements on the pieces so that you would have them right there so that when people are storing them and everything, it's easy to be, you know, pull it out and be like, oh, this is Definitely. my, you know, five inch, Definitely. you know, so you would know yeah. it when you're grabbing. For sure. That is a great point. A good, good thing. You know, our, our furthest uh, distributor is in Israel and they have used different characters and different language obviously so um so they would really love to have those measurements on there <laughs> uh yeah that would probably mess them up but i mean i do oh, with a sharpie them up and it would it wouldn't they, um, go ahead oh no go ahead i was gonna say i i use a sharpie as soon as i get mine every time and hand write it on i just yes. do it um for me um and i write in inches because that's what i measure in. but if you were in the uk or somewhere else you wouldn't want inches you want centimeters on there so yeah are you if you, you write know, them there then that brings in the question are you going to do it in you, you know metric what are you going to write it in yeah and and that's the other reason why i don't write them on there with sharpies because that's one of the pet peeves of mine is the um even sue from dole and sue you wrote on my tool <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, no no i'm fine <laughs> so i like my own handwriting on there. i don't want somebody else's handwriting on there so you don't want to see my handwriting but, but uh, um so anyway, that's what I would suggest, like writing with a pencil or a pen or yes, you probably that's a great suggestion. We're hoping the reason we haven't done it is also we're trying to have nice labels on there that people that the distributors can use uh, with a UPC code and everything. But we've grown so fast and just one of those things that hasn't been able to, that haven't been able to accomplish. So it is a great suggestion. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, Could you quickly, the platter, the plate you have right there with the little, looks like dots, like the red rim with the dots. Nope, one more over. 
Oh, there, yep, one. that way, that one. Uh, this folks one? are asking, what is what? How, what did you do to the surface of that? What is that? Tell us about that. This is in a demo too on Instagram. I think it's on Instagram for sure. If you go into a, into the site, but this in the middle has a um, uh, underglaze transfer, and then we painted. I painted some um, velvet underglaze on the edges, and then once I had that, once it dried enough, I carved the design on that edge to um, to get that uh, get those edges. So, oh yeah, I made these last week for the Alabama Clay Conference. I also made a nice blue one that has uh, just the carving in the lip too. So that's the great thing. There's so many things now that you can do to now decorate your pieces. I don't know if you want me to tell Fantastic. quickly. Talk about, we have two big equipment things here we can quickly talk about, or or if we're running out of time, that's fine too. You but. got two and a half minutes. Go. Okay, great. Okay, <laughs> quick talk about. Uh, the wheel, this wheel is, I, I can't say enough good things about this wheel. And it's, uh, it, I'm not being endorsed by Speedball or they didn't tell me to say this. They're great people for sure. And every every manufacturer in the clay industry, 95% of them are, are amazing people. And they could be making automobiles or something that's more lucrative, but they're they're making pottery products. So uh, they their heart is in this, uh, in, in our world. So. Um, but anyway, this one, just to kind of sort things out for you, this Artista wheel is fantastic. It's for this kind of style work, hand building, making small mugs or bowls. It's great. It, I don't have, but oh, here it is down here. It comes with this really nice durable flash pan that would fit under there. Um, but I have to remove it for the, so that the um, bat will fit on there. And uh, wheel. I also would highly recommend, I have it kind of buried under here, protected my nice, I call it my gold version wheel. I have the gold version is, is the Brent mm -hmm. uh, CXC from Amico, Brent. Um, and it's an amazing wheel, but it's an investment. And it's an investment that you can um, definitely get your money back with. Um, but it's just, if you, if you, if, uh, you want to spend around $2,000, between fifteen and $2,500 per wheel, it is, unbelievable it's got a 10-year warranty um, but then this is the bronze version bronze version if uh, you just want this wheel to kind of carry around and uh and have it accessible the this is the, the bronze version both are olympians right both are receiving gold our medals so um yeah <laughs> we're gonna switch maybe the cameras here and just a quick talk about this uh, uh there's definitely lots of um Lots of products out there uh, as far as slab rollers are concerned. And I'm a big fan of, of Bailey. And I know a lot of distributors aren't because uh, Bailey sells everything direct. They don't sell through distributors. Unless you're in Canada, you can buy it from Tuckers. Tuckers have Bailey wheels. Um, so they have an arrangement because of the border. Um, but uh, uh, J Jim Bailey, is uh, he started out with... Uh, Kind of doing like what I'm doing, doing fairs, and then started making his own tools. And so he's really the expert at uh, at making wheels, and he's super technical and super knowledgeable about all this equipment. So Bailey is um, is 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 a great wheel. This is a tabletop wheel, and it's and it, the great thing about the Bailey too is it's 16 inches, so you can even make uh, the wa plates that are 15 inches wide. Right, um, that's the so mini maker, right? Yeah, yeah. I think Guess I got a yeah. I had an email waiting for me last night from Bailey saying they totally missed out on Clay ShareCon, but they wanted to offer twenty five dollars off to anybody who wants to buy a mini maker using the code. Kev, do you have the code for Bailey? Is it just the? Uh, we'll get it for you. But they came on very late because last night was rather late, yeah. um, and so they don't even get to be up as a sponsor. But they are doing twenty five dollars off a mini maker um, okay. during. So I got to find that code, but we'll put that up. But it's, it. yeah, it's you can great. probably just call them and contact them and just tell them you saw them on Clayshire. And, and you want the, that's right. And, uh, you want to save. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll do that for you because they always do things like uh, kind of, uh, they have to process your card after you make the payment anyway. So, and then yeah, always are, tell them you're a member of Clayshire. Tell whoever you're buying stuff from. Yes. So, because totally. yes, yes. they might have something special they'll do, or so many people will ask, they'll be like, geez, I should be doing something special. 
exactly. And then this is the this is the um, the bigger model. This is the DRD two, and this is this is great. It has a gear. You can hear that clicking noise. And so that clicking noise has gear in there, so it makes you to um, helps you uh, to be able to to uh, do a whole big slab of clay without a, a huge amount of force. So the gears are really helping you. And this one you can't go the go the opposite direction. Right. So if you have a clay studio, there's um, there uh, there um, you it won't wreck the gears in there for you because it only go that one direction. So. Yeah, so Bailey slab rollers are great. You know, there's definitely great ones out there. Shimpo, um, what's the, what's the other blue ones are are, are great, uh, but uh, too so uh, <laughs> all kinds of slab rollers out there. So uh, and that yeah, big so, one, I I have that same that DRD two is the one I use all the time in my studio. That's my favorite. I don't have a little one. Um, I don't travel like Jeff does and make pottery on slab rollers. Yeah. Although I did a workshop in. Um, once in the slab roller they had was basically broken. I mean, I can roll out a slab pretty easy by hand, but I, I, I think I could probably roll one as quick by hand as Definitely. a roller, maybe. Yeah. I yeah, don't remember know. Remember that time you helped We me should have a challenge, Jeff, me and you. I'll roll it by hand. You use, <laughs> starting from the same, from a bag of clay. I'll roll mine by hand. Deal. You do it through your roller. We'll see who's done first. Okay, deal. <laughs> that would be fun. That would be fun. <laughs> that would be fun. I think, remember sadly, we are, we are quick. Quick little sec thing about the CCSA. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. 200 uh, make and takes in like three yes. days. Yes, yes. <laughs> Rolling out a, a hundreds of slabs on that little yeah, slab little roller. Slab. And it's a little champ, that one is. It yeah. goes. And the thing about a slab roller is they're so even. Like you roll it out by hand, that's that's great. But, you know, you can get it so even yeah. through that slab roller. Yeah. It's fabulous. Yeah. We are, so yeah, we are. Definitely reach out to me if you have questions about equipment or recommendations of things, kilns or other products, or even distributors. I can especially talk um, off the air about who's who's great people to deal with and who's not. And, uh, uh, they all are. <laughs> so definitely Jeff's reach so out to help you uh, <laughs> kind of navigate that world of, uh, yeah, especially the, the good stuff. Yeah. So. But great people. So awesome. Support local as much as possible because uh, this helps everybody. Okay. Is, uh, like That's, I said, they can be selling something else and making a lot more money. Uh, so they're selling clay products and so they're there for you. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right, Jeff. Thank you so much, Jeff, for another great little session here awesome. on ClayShareCon. Thank you so much. It's so good, you know, listening to Jeff talk about all the tools. Ooh, and then um, I'm looking at the baby slab roller, that little Bailey. That's a sweet slab roller if you're looking to get one. We do have a code for it. Kev, what's the code for that? I'll say it out loud. Tell me the name. Is Hang it, on, I'm going to grab it real quick. He's going to grab it, but tell it to me. I'll make the verbal announcement too. So they do. Bailey is doing a deal during ClayShareCon. Sadly, they just sent me that email last night, so I couldn't put it up and we couldn't put the our sponsor page up. They just were too busy and uh, I think so many people were ordering slab rollers they felt like they had to do something <laughs> which I mean they're great slab rollers so I don't blame them so what's the code it's clay share mini 25 it's clay share mini 25 to save $25 off the mini maker or mini might mighty maker the little mini one that they do and there's two sizes for those minis all right, so I will be back in a few minutes. Um, actually, at 4.15, we're going to be doing Scraffito. That's what I have here, the thing that started it all. So we'll be doing this in a little less than 15 minutes. I'll see you back here. Then we'll have our giveaway. Thanks again, Jeff, and thanks, everybody.